Don't know about you, but the first thing I do whenever I start planning is to make a cup of tea. Usually as well I get biscuits, but I told my husband don't buy any more biscuits. He does the grocery shopping, so it's like don't buy any more biscuits because I eat too many. And annoyingly, he listened to me, so there is not a custard cream in the house. But I'm still going to push through. It's okay. I'll make it. What I wanted to talk about was the virtual explorer expedition adventures that the Twinkle team have created. Now, one of the brilliant things about it is that it's designed to be done as a family because we know that home ed families are full of all different ages, all different stages, all different needs. And it's really nice when you can come together and do something all on the same topic. So why might you decide to do family style learning? I think there's a fair few advantages. For one, you can save a lot of time and energy in having to do completely different things for everybody else because that often means you have to then do them with your children at completely different times and that can make some mornings drag on. The other thing is that it can um, really help collaboration with your kids because it's a real life skill to develop to work with different people with different needs different stages of understanding about a topic that's what it's like working as a team in real life and our kids get to learn that as they're doing it with their siblings they might have to learn patience they might have to learn turn taking they might have to learn different ways of learning and adapting so that everyone can be included and that's really important. It can also help with exposing our kids to content and skills and explanations that we wouldn't maybe have naturally thought of because of their age but that they're really ready for. That's one thing that I've really found is that my younger children really love to be talking about maybe more complicated topics than I maybe would have thought of and they really love to dig deep into that because they've been exposed to it from their older sibling and also you're modeling different type of language and vocabulary as you're talking to different children in different ages and that's really great for them to hear as well. Now there are a few pitfalls of doing family style learning and it doesn't suit everyone and the danger that I potentially see and that I've fallen into as well is that it can actually become more time consuming. If you are trying to make bespoke activities and almost like three different curriculums around the one topic, say if it's the Antarctica adventure, then that can be really tricky to do if you're wanting it to be that fine tuned to everybody. You end up spending a lot more time because you kind of have the limitations of a topic and you're trying to manipulate things so that you can have everyone doing something that's exactly right for their age. And that can take a lot of time. Logistically, when you're sat around the table as well, it can just be a bit chaotic at times. It can feel a bit like hard work trying to figure out who to help first, what to do, how to manage the different needs and behaviours like that, especially if you've got very young kids in the mix, that can be really hard work. So those are some dangers that hopefully by talking through this video and sharing some ideas together as well in the Facebook group, hopefully we can avoid those. One way to avoid those pitfalls is to not change the activity even if you've got different ages. There are still ways of managing those different needs and here are a few that might help you. So first you could do it by outcome. In other words, you give the same activity, but you're expecting different things to come out of it. If we're having kids draw a penguin, then your three-year-old is just gonna have some shapes and colors. Then as they get older, they're gonna have more detail and some labels. Then they might have some really detailed sketching and some more writing around it. So by outcome is a really easy way of differentiating. By support is another way that I think as parents we quite naturally do. For example, you're going to be giving more verbal clues to children that need a little bit more help. You're going to be maybe giving them some things to work from, words to copy. Someone might have access to a computer. That's what that picture is. It is a computer. So you can support them in different ways on the same task. 
by responsibility is one of my favourites. So say if you're playing a game, your younger kid might be in charge of rolling the dice. Someone might be in charge of keeping the score. Someone else might be in charge of answering the questions. So everyone's involved, but they've got different jobs in that. And by questioning, so we can do that in different ways. We can have open and closed questions. We can ask the who and the what questions to our younger children, the why and the how questions to our old ones. And all of these would be given the same task to each kid. However, obviously there will be times when you need to change it by activity. So each different age in your family does a different thing. Our field guide is going to be golden for that. I will share that in a minute. Preparing is really important, but it's also important to pivot. You might find that you prepare different activities, but they all want to do the same thing. So sometimes you just have to be prepared to roll with it. You've likely downloaded the PowerPoint and the lovely pack already, but this field guide that I'm showing you now is going to be invaluable when it comes to family style learning. I'll show you how I would plan with it coming up soon. But as you can see, it's just really easy to click through the different links and suggestions for all the different topics and then decide what age and which child that's going to suit best in your family. But this is how I might do it if I was planning and preparing in advance. Now, you can obviously do this on the computer, but I'm using the sticky notes to show you the process that I would go through. So because it's a choose your own adventure, you're not necessarily going to know what order you're going to do things, but you do know the topics that are coming. So I'm looking through the field guide about Deception Island. I've decided to use orange to show the things that we would all do together. And then I've got blue for my youngest. So they're doing a sticking, cutting activity, and then I'll get some blue paint out. Then I've got green for the primary school age kids and that can be differentiated by support. So we'll read um, a comprehension together, they can make a poster, they can add their own labels or I can scribe for them. And then I've got an activity for key stage three kids, they can prepare a debate and try and persuade us of their point of view about whaling because there's a great resource for that. And there's also a lovely video that we can watch together without the younger kids as well that we can discuss together. So then I just went ahead and printed out what I needed. I did extra copies of some of the kind of crafty type activities because I think they might get a little jealous if they don't get to do one, some of the old kids. So I put extra ones in there just in case. I've got my reading comprehensions. And then even though I don't have a key stage three child, I did actually print off the debate cards and make a note of the will in PowerPoint because I think my oldest would really like that. So there we go, job done. I can just file that away and when we get to that part, whip it out. So that didn't take as long as I thought. Maybe it's because I wasn't distracted by custard creams. But it was really straightforward actually because all of the, the thousands of resources on Twinkle can be overwhelming and the field guide kind of condenses that to make it a little bit easier. What I love about these virtual adventures is that there's a lot of freedom for your children. They can lead the way. There's a choose your own adventure. They can decide where they want to dive deep or not. But we've got the kind of backup of the field guide so that we can prep a little bit in advance and help them when they want to extend that learning a little bit more. And it's already differentiated for us. So I'm excited for when I do this with my children. And I hope you are too. If you've got any questions, leave them below in the comments and I'll see you soon.